Having the opportunity to give yourself permission to focus on the business and not be absorbed in the business, I think can be really magical as well and kind of help you get into this space of what's possible instead of just what is right now. All right, so here we are with another edition of Growing the Future podcast with uh, my sidekick Holden and very excited to have Heather with us from FMC and Jorg, our current uh, leader and president of the board. And so very excited to have you guys on the podcast today. One of the things I was thinking about as we were planning for this call is that you know, I don't think they've written too many country songs about farm business management or business planning. You know, there's, I, I kept thinking about um, the song about, you know, she thinks my tractor's sexy and everyone thinks about the equipment and the landscape and all the sexy stuff of farming. But um, I think all the, the country songs are written about when you don't have a good plan, like when your dog left and your wife left and you lost your tractor and the banks come into foreclose and those kind of things. Why don't more people get excited about these things? The reality is we see all the kinds of benefits that come out of business planning and, and the different approaches. So why is this not something that uh, is more sexy and what, you know, why aren't we singing about, you know, how she likes my business plan or my balance sheet? Because um, sometimes that might be a lot more interesting than the tractor if people understood that. If I talk about financial management and go deep into working capital and all that stuff, uh, people feel feel often overwhelmed. But, you know, I think it's to, you know, you can start with little things and um, and then get, get deeper into it once you develop a, a passion for it. Most farmers didn't get into farming to be business managers, to manage people and to, you know, look after um, consumer relations and, and all the wonderful things that come with managing the farm. Um, so you have this kind of interesting juxtaposition between this is what I'm really passionate about is the production and the field and growing things and, and caring for animals, etc. But then this is all the stuff I need to do to stay in business and to keep doing that. And I think that kind of discrepancy is where we where we're challenged a little bit in, you know, how do we feed the passion with maybe not the, the food that the farmer is looking for. But I think back to how do we make it sexy? I mean, success is sexy, right? Even if the business planning and stuff isn't. But what we need to do is kind of bridge the gap between, you know, seeing the results and hey, do you know where that came from? That came from doing a business plan or that came from doing a pretty slick financial analysis and we were you know able to afford this that or the other or to go in this cool direction and try new things because we afforded ourselves the flexibility to try something new everybody in the world can buy state-of-the-art seeds chemicals fertilizers uh tractors seeders and so on that can all be bought but you know management is is pretty hard to to replicate and those who who focus on management and you know that's not only farm business management that's also production management obviously uh those will be those guys will be the the guys that will be there in future and will strive so it's not necessarily entirely up to you right you just have to be able to fill that bucket and fill that gap so you know, whether it's working with an outside advisor, whether it's working with a team of advisors or team of peers, or whether it's a combination of that, building the capacity within your farm, as long as somebody's ticking that box, it doesn't mean that, you know, to be a farmer, you have to be, you know, X, Y, Z, as long as you're, you know, kind of checking those boxes on the things that need to be handled and that works for you and your team and your skills and your passion, then, you know, you, you'll you be a-okay. It doesn't mean you have to stop going in the tractor or the combine or stop doing the things that you really love and make your soul sing. You just, you know, have to make sure those things get done, um, but in a way that works for you and your team. One of the things that was really powerful for me, it was the, the Harvard study on written goals. And so they had taken uh, a large uh, swath of their graduates from Harvard 
and split them up into basically three groups. So one had clearly written and defined goals for what they wanted to achieve. The other group had just goals, but they didn't write them down and they weren't formalized. And the rest didn't set any goals. So 84% of the group didn't set any goals. The 13% that had goals but not committed to paper earned twice as much as the bottom 84%. And the 3% of them had clearly written goals with plans on how to accomplish that. And that group earned 10 times as much as the other 97% combined. And so when, when I heard about this study or it was explained, my first thought was like, holy mackerel, I'm going to start writing down goals like right now, because that is an incredible difference. And one of the things that, you know, we've learned at Strategic Coach was using the R factor question, where do you want to be in three years from now? And we've used that with our consulting clients and, and we use that within our own business. And it is incredible to see how often you achieve the goals that you set out in the time frame that you did or even before. It is unbelievable how the the just how that works. It it it's just uncanny to to see that and experience it, but it really is true. There's a bit of an art to it as well, right? Like having your strategic planning meeting maybe off-site when you're not distracted by the phones or who's pulling in the driveway or who's over in that field. But, you know, having that right place where it's like, okay, we're all here and we're focused on this. Having the opportunity to give yourself permission to focus on the business and not be absorbed in the business, I think can be really magical as well and kind of help you get into this space of what's possible instead of just what is right now. One of the coolest definitions of happiness that I've ever seen was simply, you know, if your environment um, equals what you think it should be, essentially you're happy. And if it doesn't, you have two choices. You either can change your environment or you can change your expectations. Well, I've learned a lot and now I have to start thinking of lyrics for this country song. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it was a fun call. Uh, thanks a lot, both of you, uh, Heather and York, for for coming on. If you want to learn more about Farm Management Canada, just check out their website. Uh, we've got our annual Ag Excellence Conference coming up here in December, uh, virtually, of course, uh, this time around. But uh, always a, a great uh, kind of national event to to get some of those uh, juices flowing. And yeah, I mean, if if you're successful without a plan imagine what you could do with the plan so uh get a plan man that's that's all i got to say it's uh it's been a lot of fun uh thanks for being on the call today and, and hopefully this uh helps inspires others to to work towards achieving their dreams and and their freedoms thanks so much for the opportunity thanks terry and the plan to freedom <laughs>